you have called us to be your own. You have set us before you as your children. We are created in your image and we are redeemed by Jesus Christ. We are the sheep of your pasture. And this morning we come to you grateful. So in this time, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. For we are here to worship. It's not about us, but it's about you, Lord. And what we can give to you in our praise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. Are you, uh, are you ready for beggar's night tonight? I'm just putting it out there that, again, I, this year we have the regular size candy bars. <laughs> well, it's a, you know, it's a wonderful time of year. It's, it's fun to watch uh, the kids and the parents come up the walk. It's always fun to see uh, the creativity they have in their costumes. It's one of the things I love about autumn. Another one of the things I love about autumn is this day, Commitment Sunday, Consecration Sunday. A couple weeks ago, we were talking in staff meeting about the, the you know, that, that if we're able, people can certainly come forward uh, at offering time, the service, and, and put your uh, commitment cards in, in the baskets along with your offering. Um, But then we often come forward, don't we? I mean, we come forward at baptisms, at confirmation, at weddings. Uh, when we have memorial services and funerals for our, our loved ones, they're, they're here. The remains are cremated, remains are here. When we commission missionaries to go off like, like we did in Missouri, they're, they're here. It's something that, that we do. It's something that we do in, in life. We, we stand and we, we are counted as wanting to be involved in, in God's kingdom. And, and when I, I look at this, I, I understand that there are so many voices in our head talking to us about different issues. And, uh, and I understand that sometimes we forget who we are. But I want us first to remember whatever we're going through in life. And this morning, just this morning, talking with people with different things happening in their lives. I want us to be able to claim that basic truth of who we are. And I want you to say right now, I am a child of God. Now we're going to say it boldly. I am a child of God. You know, I think sometimes we lose track of, of who we are. And I think it's just life gets busy and, and, we, and things get hectic and we get carried away and, and we, we, get, we lose our focus on, on that basic truth, on that basic truth, and we begin to get distracted out of worry for different things. And so if we could have that, that scripture up, please, Sean. Thank you. From Matthew chapter 6. We've been going through the sixth chapter of Mac, Matthew this month, and, uh, and I'm going to encourage you to keep reading the sixth chapter of Matthew. I'll also read the fifth and seventh. Read the, the Sermon on the Mount. But Matthew chapter 6, right in the middle of it, is what we've been going through this month. And Jesus says, toward the end of the chapter, when he's talking to the people, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the fields, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, Oh, what are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow brings worries of its own, and today's trouble is enough for today. As you, many of you know, uh, we have three children. The oldest two children uh, were my wife's Ellen's from a previous marriage. I was privileged to adopt them when they were uh, six and a half and eight years old. And uh, I was not therefore able or privileged to be at their births. However, I was privileged to be at the birth of our youngest child, Tamsin. And uh, I remember that very well. Um, Ellen went into labor in about one o'clock in the morning. Uh, her parents were up in Minnesota. We tried calling them. They weren't answering the phone. They were supposed to be the ones that come down and take care of the kids when we go. There was a, a teacher in the school system that said, if it's a weekend, I can come and take care of the kids until grandparents get there. Well, that was Friday night, early Saturday morning that labor started, and then we called Joyce, and she went in, and and she took over trying to call the grandparents. Finally, uh, we called an uncle who lived 20 miles away, and he drove and said, wake up, you got to get down to Iowa. After Tamsin was born, uh, Terry Starr, she was the, the nurse, a member of the church I was serving at the time. She was the lead nurse in the delivery room. And she placed Tamsin in my arms, and, or my hands, and I carried her like this down the hallway to another room where they put her on a stainless steel scale and, and we're doing all these tests and, and she looked so cold and she looked so confused and I, I, re, I took my finger and I just started rubbing across her collarbone from one shoulder to another and I say, honey, I'm here. Now I've been talking to her for the last six or seven months and she turned her head and she, she looked around and she was trying to focus on where that voice was coming from. But then that experience, there was that, there was that electricity, that bond that was formed then between father and daughter. And as I drove home that night, that Saturday night, uh, to get ready for, for church, I, I was thinking a couple of things. One, I, all the things I had to, to get taken care of that I had not gotten carried, that I was going to get taken care of on Saturday. The next morning uh, we were having the senior recognition and the senior breakfast and all that stuff and, and I was hosting and, and I got up and when, when I got home there was a voice on the answering machine saying that the, the uh, adult leaders had taken care of anything, everything just show up. But while I was driving home, I, I got to think about all those times in my life when as a pastor I had, I had talked to par new parents and new grandparents about their, the new arrival in their family and, and they would all say the same thing. They said, this, he or she is such a little miracle. And I would say, yes, they are. But when I had my own, in that way, my word, there was something about, I, yes, it's true. And I was praying forgiveness on the way home in the car, the times I had just sort of dismissed that because it was, but man, she is a miracle. And it got me thinking, and 
the next morning when I stood before the seniors and their, pres their parents at, at the breakfast, I told this story about her miraculous birth. And I said at that point, and they're still miracles. Your seniors today are still miracles, but at what point do we age out, any of its age out, of being a miracle? We don't. And I looked around the room, and I, there were some of the parents that I was particularly close to, and them and their kids, and their tears were coming down. I'm going, no, don't start. But our basic identity as child of God, we are miracles. We are God's treasure. We are God's treasure. And when Tam, and when, excuse me, when, when Jesus is saying that, don't worry about what about about things that that look at the birds of the air and the lilies of the field that we're more valuable to God than them that, that we don't need to worry about these things that God is going to take care of us we are God's treasure we are God's miracles that's what God is that's what Jesus is saying we matter to God God loves us deeply and passionately and can love us no more than he already does and so I'm going to ask you now church do you believe that you're more valuable than the lilies of the field and the birds of the air Boldly, do you believe that you are more valuable than the birds of the air and the lilies of the field? You see, we are God's creation and we are God's creation. And we know that God cares for us and will take care of us. That's, that's why we do the things we do to try to get closer to God. We, we have a daily devotional. We read the Bible. We, we, we come to church where we can and understand that, that there is, we be, and be reminded that there is a God who cares and who has a claim on our lives. That's why we have a, make prayer a pattern of our life because we need God's perspective. We need God's perspective because without God's perspective, we lose sight of who we are and what we can do. Jesus sang that song to those gathered on a hillside that they are more valuable and don't worry about a thing but first seek the kingdom of God and all those things that we worry about they will fall into place in their proper perspective and their proper priority and they will be added to us in their proper perspective and their proper priority that these things will occur and we can worry even in the not noticing of the, pro of the providence of, of, of God, we, we can worry. We can worry about things that happen and, and the things that, that, that we get lost about. And there's, there's value to worry because it's a, it's a defense mechanism that we are put in, that's put into us to say to, to it was survival. It keeps us out of trouble. But when you and I talk about worry, when Jesus is talking about worry, what he's talking about mostly there is that irrational kind of emotional experience. That purpose-lacking, unhelpful stream of consciousness where all those thoughts plague us rather than protect us. That they hinder us rather than help us. And that worrying may grow out of this innate need for survival, that's true, but what Orion can also do is do a, well, it can be a life-destructive force rather than a life-giving emotion. You know, Jesus sang a song. So I say again, make sure you read the sixth chapter of Matthew. And listen it to it as a love song, or, or listen as it has a song of don't worry. And, and we know those songs. We know those songs. I mean, we, Bob Marley told us not to worry. Do you remember that one? We don't have to worry. Because every little thing's going to be okay. All right. Remember that? Every little thing going to be all right. It's about three little birds sitting on his porch. And they were singing this beautiful song, and that's what he heard come out of their mouths. 
or their beaks. Beach Boys. I love the Beach Boys. I've been to three Beach Boys concerts in my life. Don't worry, baby. Everything will be all right. Remember that one? But then, from the 80s, there was the classic, and I think it's the, one of the great Don't Worry songs. Remember that one? See if I can get this right. I can only breathe in when I whistle with a microphone on, otherwise it's all... I can't. There you go. Don't worry, be happy now. But these songs that they really pale in comparison to a Savior who's talking about not worrying because we're in God's hands, that, that there is a kingdom that we focus on instead, that when we put the kingdom first and, and when we, 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 we cling to the righteousness that Christ gives us in his, in his love, that what we have is a much better perspective on life and a much realistic way of living out that life. This is the song that comes there. That is, that is why we, we, I want us to explain some things that, that is on. There's, there's, two, there's two papers in your bulletin. One is this one. It has treasure on the front. If you open it up right here, it's, uh, you can separate it. So if you forgot yours at home, these were sent out this week. If you forgot yours at home, you can fill it out like you were intending to and put it in. There's also another uh, bifold paper in there. The trifold talks about things like automatic withdrawal and all sorts of other ways that, that we can give and why. And the bifold talks a little bit about who we want to become. And we can talk about numbers and everything like that, but that's not the bottom line. The bottom line is we're doing this because we know that we can be people to reach out to the world. We know we have people who worry and who fret and who know to need, need to know a Jesus that can say, don't worry. This is what we're looking for. One of my biggest passions in, in this coming um, ministry plan for 2017 is, is the increase in communications. Now, I'm the first one to admit that the way I have always gotten most of my information from the church, partly because I wrote a lot of it, is through the, the newsletter, our messenger. And that's valuable, but I also know that my children won't sit and read anything that long. I also know that there are so many other ways than the U.S. Postal Service to communicate. And so whatever has always meant my fine, that's great and dandy standard for communication, doesn't work anymore. Works for me. And if it was about me, that would be fine. But what it's about is everyone to try to give and extend communication in the way that people receive and extend communication. With the texting and the Instagrams and the Twitter and whatever else is next. Do we know what's next yet, Sam? Those are already old. Oh, whatever is next, Sam just said, are already old. <laughs> Snapchat, no, not Snapchat. So... But this is where we are in life. And again, it's not just because whatever is cool is cool. It's because that's the way we communicate people what is happening in the life of the church, the things we can provide for them to grow themselves more closely to Christ. Everything we're about is connecting people, whether we sit next to them in the pew or not. Connecting people with Jesus Christ. To sing the song. 
to the world that Christ sings to each one of us. That you matter to God. That you are a treasure to God. That you are a child of God. That you are a miracle of God. And that's true of everyone. And that's what we're trying to get through to the world. And to the community of Indianola. You see, every day you and I are given a task. That task is simply trusting God. We trust God with the people and things that are important to us. We trust God with the people and things that are important to us and, and that we can surrender. You know, Jacob Armstrong talks about a time that, well, when his daughter was born, their oldest child was born. He had never been a dad before. And one thing he will talk about freely and admit is that he has problem with anxiety. He has anxiety attacks from time to time. And so the scriptures don't worry. The songs cast, uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his glorious face. And the things of this world will strain, turn strangely dim in the light of his power and grace. These songs mean something to him. But again, he was tired. He had been up for a long time when his daughter was born. And when it, they came time to take her into the room to weigh her and everything, he wouldn't let her go. No, this is my baby. He started feeling those, those anxiety attacks come on. And, and the nurses understood and recognized this. They, they must have seen this before. And they say, okay, you're coming with us. And, and he was there while they did the test. They, he was right there next to them while, while they weighed his daughter, Mary. And then they took her back to the neonatal nursery and they put a gown on him and they sat him in a corner right next to her crib only parent in the room and he was sitting there and suddenly on all these what ifs we know what all the things that can happen to us in life started coming through from cradle to grave and he started worrying and obsessing and then he got a text and he read his text there and it said Jake, you are not responsible for your baby's breath or for her heartbeat. You're not, res you're not responsible for her brain waves. God's already given her that. Your job is going to be raise her in, as a Christian to love Jesus and her neighbor. And you'll get there. But you don't need to worry about it, Jake. God has got you. We've all got you. Let her go. Give her back to God. She'll be fine. She's going to be fine. Just step out of the nursery. And that's when Jake realized. He said, you know, all this stuff, it sounded like he knew exactly what he was going through, like he could see me. And he said, step out of the nursery. He looked up, and there was his friend staring at him through the glass. He'd come to see the baby and the new mom and the new dad and recognize his friend in the middle of something uncomfortable. We are children of God. Do you believe that? We are miracles of God. Do you believe that? Then our hearts should be on the thing, first and foremost, on the things of God. that we take the treasures of this world and invest them in the treasures of God. That people will know that Jesus loves them, that they're, uh, anybody going through anything in life will know and understand and remember that there's a God who's walking with them and cares about them and is lifting them up. So this is what we're doing. If you haven't made your decision yet on for the 2017 uh, ministry plan, how you can support it, please continue doing that. After I pray, we're going to have a, a song. And as you're able, you can bring your offering as well as your, your, uh, your card up here if you brought it with you. You can also go online and fill it out then, there. But now let's pray. Lord, I'm a child of God standing here in a room full of 
to your children. I am a miracle of God standing here in a room full of your miracles. I am a treasure of God standing here in a room full of your treasure. But there are people not in this room, so many more. Your children, your miracles, your treasures. So Lord, help us reach out. Equip ourselves and others to reach out and change the world one life at a time for Jesus Christ. Amen.